All right, this is the specific problem that I'm interesting to, interested to model. It shows you a helical, a helical spring. And the problem says model this problem that you did last week with beam elements and compare your simplest calculations. So since I didn't do it last week, I will first model this thing as solid elements to show you how you make a helix and how you convert it in the spring like that. And then I come back and solve it with beam elements. So the first part is not what the intention of this tutorial is. I just want to show you how to make a helix and how to make a solid object out of that so that you can solve it with tetrahedral element. But remember, the intention of the problem is to use beam elements to do it, okay? All right, so uh, let's see now. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna ignore the dimensions and uh, uh, just do think these things on the fly. So the first thing I want to do is uh, uh, create a point here. Uh, let me see now, where are my uh, reference elements? I think I've closed them here. So let me go ahead, let me switch to, uh, uh, you have a choice of going to generative shape design or you can go to mechanical design. Oops, just a second. My Katia went into state of coma right there. And then down here, wireframe and surface design. So you can create a helix from here or from the generative shape design, which is, uh, uh, let's see, uh, where is uh, shape? Shape and Generative shape design. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to do it with uh, uh, with mechanical design, wireframe, and surface design down here. Okay. Now let me make a point here. Zero zero zero. Here's a point. Coordinates uh, zero zero zero. You can see it's right there. Okay. And then I'm going to let me move these things out. See if I can find the helix for you. So let me see now, this is a point, this is not what I want, it must be somewhere here, okay? Not this one, right there, see this? Helix. So look at the, the toolbar, which says wireframe, and scroll down to the second last, or, or the last one, and select helix. So it's going to ask you a few things. For example, uh, let me see now, where's the starting point? The starting point is right there. Where is the axis? The axis is z-axis. Okay. Let's see. Now, what is the pitch? The pitch is basically the difference between two coils. Okay, so let me... Uh, let me see now. Okay, so let's see. Uh, helix creation, the original point is on the helix axis. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, back off. So, uh, this point, this point, I don't want it to be a zero, zero, zero because I'm using the Z axis right here as the axis of the helix. And this point, I don't want it to be on the axis. So let me move it uh, one inch, coordinate one inch right there, okay? Now, now let's go ahead and do a helix. It says, what is the starting point? The starting point is right here. What is the axis? The axis is Z axis, and you can see that. And the pitch is, uh, uh, the pitch is, uh, let's see now, the, the pitch is uh, the distance between two coils. So let me make this thing uh, for now, uh, maybe one, okay? And the height, the height, let's make it, uh, 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 I don't know, 10 maybe. And then we preview it, it's right here, see this? Okay, now let's uh, play with this thing a little bit. Uh, maybe I want to make the the uh, the height. Uh, let me see now. The height, uh, the the pitch. Let's make the pitch smaller. So 0.5. Let 
there we are and the height is this is too high so let's go five something that looks respectable as I, in, in, in drawing that I have let me make it four preview okay good so this is four inches the distance between uh, uh, two coils is half an inch, so this half an inch, there's eight of them as you can see. And I say, okay, good. So we created the, at least the wireframe helix. Now, in order to create a solid object, I'm going to draw a circle here, perpendicular to that curve, and then rib it along that, uh, along that axis, uh, along the helix. So let's see now. Uh, what we want to do is to create a plane. And the method of creating is perpendicular to the curve, normal to the curve, and the curve is this, and the point is there, okay? Notice that I created a plane here, and on that plane, I will sketch, I will sketch a circle. This is going to be the diameter of that helical, uh, helical uh, uh, spring. This can't be too big because then it can interfere with the other other coils. So let's exit. And now we're going to do a rip. Now, obviously, you want to create a solid object. If you create a solid object, you won't find it here. You have to switch to part design. Part design. Find the rip. The rib is right there. And uh, let's see it carefully. Be care uh, we've got to pay attention to this thing. Okay, the profile is actually that circle, sketch one, and this, the center curve is that helix. Just give it a second. All right, and let's preview it. There we are. So now I can apply material to this thing and, uh, you know, uh, basically go ahead with the wireframe and uh, no, to generate instruction analysis. Let's actually do that. Okay, let's apply the material. This is not the intention of this present exercise, but uh, uh, why don't we do it? Okay, because we want to solve this beam problem. This is not the beam problem that we're doing. So let's see now. Seal on there. Okay, all right. And we're done as far as this is concerned. So we go to generative structure analysis. Katia sees a solid object, immediately it meshes it. It meshes it immediately, right there. You can look at the mesh. Right click properties, mesh. This is a horrible mesh because it's too big. But well, I just want to demonstrate to you how the method works. There we are, terrible mesh. And then we deactivate that. See, it's telling you that this mesh is too uh, too coarse, but that's okay. We just leave it the way it is. All right. Now, uh, suppose you want to fix that top point. Springs are not like that. Uh, clamp this point. Springs are either the top of it is either flat or uh, or uh, ground, and you know. But I'm just uh, leaving it the way it is. Uh, uh, in your machine design course, you learn about the springs and. Uh, uh, how they're supposed to look like and then we apply a force here to that face for example in the downward direction these are all dummy numbers i put one pound of force this is a you know gigantic string uh, put one pound of force it's going to give you tiny little stresses no almost no deflection and uh, now we can run it okay And then you can look at the deflection right here, uh, and then you can animate it. Okay, uh, let's make it faster. I guess uh, I'll actually let me make the, uh, uh, the scale bigger. So maybe uh, 200, so that it becomes like a piece of gum. Now, uh, anyway, the, the point is that this is if you wanted to do it with solid element. That's not the focus of this uh, tutorial because we're covering, uh, and, and by the way, here is the here is the one we said stress distribution. Let me change the rendering here so you can see it better. There we are. Uh, 
there is a problem with my uh, my uh, my computer. I already told you the 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 results are. Uh, this is not the way the one user stress is supposed to look like. But I have a problem with my graphics card and it gives me basically garbage. And these are tiny little stresses, very small, uh, and that doesn't surprise you because you're applying one pound, uh, one pound of uh, uh, you know uh, force at this end. Anyway, this is not the focus. So let me close this. I don't want it. Go back here. Actually, I don't need the rib. So let me just delete the rib. Delete the rib. Uh, where is that? Delete. Don't delete, delete the helix. Helix is not showing here. There we are. There's the helix. And this 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 curve is this cir circle that I draw, draw is of no use to me, so I'm going to delete it. Okay, good. All right, so now uh, we apply material to this. We have already done it. And because uh, because uh, this is a wireframe, it's not a sketch, I don't have to join it. So now we're going to go to uh, generative structure analysis. We're doing a static analysis. Okay. And let me see now. So uh, uh, what do we want to do here? Uh, we want to mesh this. Okay, so go find the beam mesher. It's right there. Uh, we are using linear elements, so select that. This will turn in yellow. And the size, roughly the size of each element is 0.349. So let's look at how, how the mesh looks like. Nothing fancy. And notice that if you put the cursor here, you get the element number and the node number. Now, you know what? Why don't we actually make this size a little bit smaller? Double click on that. Uh, maybe I go to 0.2, uh, half the size. And now when I look at, the, look at the mesh, it's more curved. You know, the, the, actually what I mean is the, the coils uh, approximate the actual uh, spring much better. Good. Now the rest of the problem is you deactivate that, okay? And I want to I want to clamp that top point. This top point is clamped, and you apply a force at this bottom point. Now make sure you don't put the the force on that point because if you do, this point is a geometrical entity. It's not a finite element. I'm going to hide this. And now apply a force at this point in that direction. Uh, here, this is a dummy value minus one, uh, uh, one pound. Minus one pound is a very small, small downward force. So let, let's make it 100 pounds. Okay. Now I have to tell the software, what is the shape of the cross section? Obviously, it's a circle. So you go to the model manager where the traffic light is. Uh, click on the 1D property. Select the select the, uh, the 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 coil and the the, the cross section is not a rec rectangular; it's a cylindrical one. And the radius is not zero, obviously. The radius, I don't know. Let's make it 0.25. That looks like. Let's see, 0.25. It's it's too big because you can see that the pitch was 0.5. And when I made the, the, the radius of this cross-section 0.25, they're bit touching each other. So let me go back to that property. It's right there. Double-click on it and make it, uh, for the radius, they get 0 0.125. 0 0.125. And OK. And OK. So now we have a beam model. We have a beam model. The cross-sections are, uh, cross are defined here. Uh, we apply the load and the the, the, the deflection. The, by the way, there is no planar symmetry here. This, this this coil, this coil spring or helical spill spring does not have any planes of symmetry. So you have to do it, run it the way it is. Just uh, run it. Okay, let's look at the deflection. This is a deflection. And you can animate it. You can see that it's actually deforming. Uh, why don't we make the deflection uh, scale bigger? So make it maybe, I don't know, uh, one. There you are. You can see this. You can see it. And by the way, if these are distracting us, 
You can always hide the properties. Don't delete it. Hide it. And now you look at the animation. Okay, which uh, resembles what we had before, except that, by the way, in the other one, I put a one pound load here. I'm putting it 100 pound load. But, okay, what about numbers? Okay, so the numbers are right there. This is the actual deformed shape. This is with the numbers. So double click on it. And uh, I can go here, go here and change it to material shading. Let me double click on this. And look again, my graphics card is a disaster. Uh, it doesn't give me the, the correct, uh, you know, uh, uh, the correct colors. But uh, uh, the, the, the magnitude of deflection is 2.99, assuming that you trust these. By the way, so better, because this is not working, I might as well go to the, to the uh, not material shading. So, for example, right there. Actually, that's not what I mean. Uh, let's go back here, double click. Sorry, that's not what I meant. So, uh, material shading is fine. Let's go to this plot, and instead of uh, average ISO, where is this? Right here. We can do it from here. Average ISO, make it symbols, okay? So, if you zoom in sufficiently, you can see that these are actually arrows. You won't have these problems when you convert, when you change this thing to uh, average ISO, you get a nice, uh, uh, you know, continuous color and things like that. I can't do it because the graphics card is not working. So the intention of this problem was to solve this thing with uh, beam elements. And of course, uh, it says that or you, you can also do a solid element and compare the results and then, uh, uh, you know, in, in the book I, have to, I also have the expression for stiffness of the spring when when dimensions are given, the pitch is given, the cross-sectional area is given, etc. And you can, you know, you can go ahead and check it against theoretical values. And that takes care of uh, uh, this problem. Uh, in the next problem, I'm going to be discussing.